Hi folks, how are you all doing today? So today we're going to learn something very new and this is going to be interesting and fun because um, this is something which is so useful, okay? Uh, like most of the kids, what, what happens is um, they'll, they'll really, uh, don't, they really don't know how to use Thunkable and they really don't um, know how to create apps on Thunkable, right? But still they would like to publish those apps which they are creating on App Lab. Right. So for such projects, we're going to see the solution for it and how to publish such apps on Thunkable and how to use them on Thunkable. Right. We're going to see. OK, so this is going to be a very interesting session. I hope you all will enjoy this. I am very much excited for this. So let's quickly get started. OK, now. So if you've not been watching my video series yet, please do go back to my channel and uh, please do watch all the videos in sequence. OK. Along with that, uh, if you're watching any playlist, right, so start with the first video so that you can understand the content and the concept better, right? So this is all, uh, no much delay. So let's quickly get started with the session today. Like we were discussing, the apps which we are creating on App Lab in Code Studio or Code.org are the apps which are called as web apps and they are not publishable, right? So what if you want to publish those apps also? Right. So we have Thunkable. Thunkable is like a savior here. Right. So Thunkable apps can be published. Right. So they can be downloaded onto your phone also. So any app which you're creating on code.org, if you want to go ahead and uh, download them onto your app, uh, I mean onto your phones, you can't do them right now. But yes, with this technique, you will be actually able to do that. OK, so let's discuss about it before um, going into Thunkable thing. First, you will have to choose what apps you're going to, you know, publish them or uh, maybe you will be downloading them onto your phones. So you will have to first decide upon which apps you're going to publish. Right. So let's select those apps. We have so many apps which we have created uh, in our uh, YouTube series also. Right. So let's select uh, two or three apps from those. So what I will do, I'll just curate all of them into one single app. Right. And I'll show you how you can go about it. Right. So we also will use the drawer navigator today so that you have a better understanding also, right? So yeah, let's quickly select the apps. We have random number generator, calculator, timer app, random color changer, math table generator. I think um, we can do something like this. Math table generator, calculator, and timer, right? So all these three apps, um, I really like them. I mean uh so they are good right they can be published i think we'll be using them let's not get you know let's not be more choosy or picky right i'm just quickly picking up these things i think three are enough most probably so it's not a restricted right so you can actually use any number of uh, apps you want okay so you can create different different apps for each of it or you can curate all of them into one right club all of them into one and you can use that so it's all up to you like how you want to you know create your app right but my idea is for today i just want to you know club all of the projects and then i want to do one single project so that's why i'm just going ahead with selecting three projects okay so this is not compulsory once i'll just do one project you can you'll automatically understand how you can do it for other other projects also okay so let's see we wanted math table generator so i'll just quickly open that we also want timer app so i'm just clicking on it to open it then then we need calculator so let's open calculator right so now now we'll let them load so after loading these so you'll just need the links of these apps right because uh, if you get the shareable link and that will be very much easy for you all to publish or uh, use the link anywhere okay so that's it that's why i'm just opening these projects okay so we have all the three projects here i hope you all remember these projects these are in app lab okay so in folks hub channel just go back to folks hub channel right open playlist in the playlist, you will have App Lab series. Okay, just open App Lab series. You will find all these app videos. If you have not watched them yet, 
please do go back to my channel and watch them. Okay, they are fun and interesting. Uh, getting back to Thunkable now, right? So on Thunkable, I'm just creating only one screen. Okay, so you can either do it like on one screen or you can do it um, with multiple screens, right? It's all up to you how you want to do this. I think I'll just do it on multiple screens so that we can have uh, one app on one screen. Okay, so I, that that would be better, more uh, preferable, right? So first thing you will have to do is you just have to change the screen name so that you are aware of which screen you are picking up and what app is going to come up, right? So let's start with calculator first. Calculator. Okay, and then we can, we need not choose any color because all the calculator, timer and math table generator, everything is already designed. Everything is already pre-coded, right? So we need not do anything on Thunkable now, okay? So it's just like uh, whatever the design you want to give, uh, like while adding the drawer navigator. So only that thing will be in the Thunkable. Rest of the things are already done and they're already pre-coded, okay? So you need not worry about coding and all here. So I'm just quickly dragging the drawer navigator component. So let's quickly place it over here. So after adding drawer navigator, so most of the times we usually forget to add the drawer width. So drawer width is very important. So I'm just giving 200. Then drawer position is, um, you can, it's up to you if you want to choose left or if you want to choose right. What happens with the drawer position left or right is, so when you use left, from the left, you can actually draw the panel, okay? Or if you're using right, from the right, you can draw the panel. So it's all up to you. I'm... I think I'll go with, I'll go with left, okay. And yeah, you can give active tint color. Active tint color is going to be the text color, okay. Most of the times I prefer dark text colors. So I'm just preferring a dark green. And background color, I'll give a light green color. Inactive tint color will be like uh, for the inactive screens, right? The, the screen which you're not on. For those, you will be applying the inactive tint, okay. So I think I will be applying gray color. So dark gray as the tint color and light gray as the background color. Perfect. They seem to be inactive, right? Gray colors, I mean, most of the times the disabled things are in gray. So that's why I chose gray. Nothing so, so much over here, right? Now, after drawing the navigator, what happens with the navigator is when you're executing this on a laptop, it will be very hard for you to drag it from the left, right? So in such cases, what I mostly prefer doing is um, I'll be using a menu icon so that it will be very easy to just click on the menu icon and get the navigator, right? So that's how I work on it and that's how I do it. For uh, adding a menu icon, you will be needing a row first of all. So I'm just quickly dragging a row. I'll drag this and place it inside the calculator screen, okay? So you mostly will have to add all the components into the drawer navigator. Basically all the components, what I mean to say is all the screens, okay? So I'm just placing this calculator screen into navigator, okay? So whatever the screens you will be adding in future, all those screens also should be present in navigator. Only then you will be seeing them in the menu. If not, they're not visible in the menu, okay? They'll be present in your app, but they're not visible on the menu, okay? So that's how it is. Now, now let's see um, how to design this calculator thing. I've already added a row in this, yeah? So in this row, first we'll change the height, height to fit contents because we'll be having a small menu icon and menu icon only needs a very small space, right? So that's why I'm just fitting it to contents. And yeah, of course, you if you want, you can actually give a background color too. So I would prefer giving a light gray color. Yeah, this suits. And then you can also, if you want, you can give the background picture, right? On the row, I don't really prefer doing that. And horizontal alignment, like we were discussing, so drawer navigator will come from the left. So you can't really keep your menu icon on the right or center, right? So that's why I'm just choosing the horizontal alignment will be left, okay? 
then then we have um, left margin over here i'm not giving left margin for this but yeah you can give a left padding if you want to or you can also choose this on the button right most preferably let's do it on the button so i'm just quickly dragging a button placing it inside the row see that when you see the left red bar only then you will have to drop it so that your component will be into the row okay if not this will not go into the row and again now uh, you will have to drag it from here right so just click on the screen change the vertical alignment to top so that the menu icon is on the top okay just click on the button and start customizing your button now we don't want any text i will be just adding a menu icon here right so the icon we can get it from um, internet also right so let's get it from internet and we don't want any background color so i think i'll just uh, make this transparent for now okay we'll place the picture definitely but i don't want the radius uh, i want my menu icon to be in square shape because i will be choosing a hamburger menu icon so hamburger menu icons usually will be having three lines right three bars right so i don't really prefer them uh, to be in a circle format so that's why i'm just changing the radius as um, four preferably four okay if you want to give a border and all yeah definitely but let me see uh, what kind of menu icon i'm going to choose so based on that i'll be changing the style again okay so before adding this menu icon thing i'll just give a left margin so let's give 15 pixel left margin let's see if this is more we can decrease it later now let's quickly just go go here and i'm searching for menu icon there's a there's a site also for downloading the icons okay if you want you can also get it from there but for now i'll just pick some random thing because i really don't want to be so picky let's let's get this yeah this is a transparent one i think this should suit copy image address from here i would say if you are if you guys are doing it just download the icon and upload the icon okay because sometimes what happens is online links uh, if the online link um, is working that's fine right or what happens is after a few days uh, they start uh, they they doesn't work why because from the source the image is removed okay so that's why don't don't really believe in online links for now this is something which is temporary i'm uh, temporarily i'm doing this so it's okay i'm just placing the link over here oh this this will not work because this is a data image if you have data and something like this these kind of images don't work so don't waste your time on those just quickly go back and just check for the another one let's get this copy image address always see that you are just copying the image address okay let's paste it over here and check oh we got it wow we could do it so we are so lucky today we just got it in the second try sometimes i have to try it for like more than 15 times 20 times but still but still these links doesn't work oh my god thank god they worked now and yeah after the row we only need one last component which is web viewer because you might be already uh, knowing about this because we have discussed this in the previous sessions also if you have not been watching my series in a sequence please do go back to my channel and start watching them in sequence then you'll understand this better we already have discussed about web viewer already in the series so just go back to my channel and uh, watch it we have created a browser app using web viewer that is fun just watch it and then so on the web viewer um, basically this is just like a mini browser which which is present on thunkable right this is one of the i think i can say that this is one of the best 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 components okay so now uh, like i was discussing this is like a mini browser right which opens web links usually browser opens web links right so whatever the domain address we give it just opens up that thing so here also whatever the domain address you give that will be opening okay so now what i will quickly do is i'll just quickly go to calculator click on share click on copy link to project okay just come back to thunkable 
here we have a property called as url right so we want the url right that will be the domain right so i'm just quickly pasting the url over here and that's it you got it so this is all about the calculator screen okay but you can see here this is something like um, it's showing something like a not connected kind of a symbol right don't worry at all okay like we were discussing the other day in one of our videos not every feature will be working on the laptop right because thunkable is a website we understand but we are creating mobile apps right so they do work on the mobile phone but not on the laptop okay so do check out do do this app on your laptop right and then download thunkable live app for testing this app okay you can only test this app on a thunkable live app okay because this will not work on a laptop okay so i'm just again telling you this will not work on a laptop you will have to do it on thunkable live okay so now let's create the second screen the first screen is done it is successful right yeah we'll we'll just have to code this menu icon let's quickly code that it doesn't really have uh, so many lines of code it just has one single line of code so just quickly go to button one because when button one click you will you would want to open the toggle drawer menu right so when button one click let's click on um, calculator screen so here you have call calculator toggle drawer menu okay so what does this do is like you can see here toggle drawer menu will be opening up when you click on the button one right i'll uh, i'll show this to you before that let's add another screen and then we'll see okay we'll just do the same kind of a thing right so i'll quickly rename this as um, the next one would be timer so i'm just writing this as timer and let's add a row or i'm just duplicating this row because that's that's more simple duplicate duplicate perfect so you can get this place it inside the timer okay just click on the timer screen and change the vertical alignment as a top right this is all now what next we'll have to do is uh, we'll have to add the web viewer component right let's quickly add the web viewer component below the row see that whenever you're using a row or a column you just minimize them after use because the when you when you're trying to add a new component it should not go into the component right so that's the reason i always prefer minimizing them let's place it down here so we have the web viewer component here so what next we just have to get the url that's it let's go to timer let's click on share copy link to project come back to thunkable place it over here paste it that's it got it you got it okay don't worry about the symbol over here this works on your mobile phone i guarantee you, this works on your mobile phone okay but you can see timer is over here right that means uh, it says that you have not added the screen into the drawer navigator if you are adding this into drawer navigator then this would be listed over here okay so let's quickly go back here just minimize the screen first drag it place it above calculator or below calculator that's up to you ha in whatever sequence you want it you can just place in that sequence okay likewise we'll just add another screen this is this is going to be the last screen now so i'm just um, renaming this as the math table right and then let's go back here let's click on timer let's click on row 2 let's duplicate this duplicate this and that's it drag it place it into math table screen perfect so we just have to click on the screen now change the vertical alignment to top so that the row will just be placed on the top and then we have to minimize this first of all drag it and place it into navigator so that you can see it within the navigator okay and then we have to add this uh, web viewer component let's quickly drag a web viewer place it over here in the bottom okay just go to the code.org 
share, copy link to project, come back to Thunkable and paste it over here. That's it. Whoa, we are done. I hope this was very simple, right? That's why I chose three screens. <laughs> okay, let's quickly see the um, execution part. Like I was telling you, this will not get executed over here. You will not see any app over here. But yes, you if you are um, opening your Thunkable live and if you are executing this, definitely this will work. Okay, definitely this will work. So I'm just clicking on the menu icon. So it let's uh, wait. We also have to code it on uh, timer, right? So let's quickly go to blocks. What I will just do is I'll go to calculator. First, I'll click on this. Copy, control C using that. I'm just copying it, control V. Whoa, we got it. So it's button two over here. So I'm just clicking on button two. It's not calculator's drawer menu any, anymore, right? It's timer's drawer menu, okay? So let's go to math table. Then let's paste it over here. Okay, got it. So let's click on button one. It's going to be button three over here. And it's it's going to be math tables toggle drawer menu. Wow. Now, now we can live test this. Okay. So I'll just, uh, you can see that this menu icon is very small. Like for this big screen, this is very small, right? So what can be done? You can also adjust the within height of the button, right? Just click on the button. Okay. So just scroll down to within height, click on this height, just choose absolute size, just choose absolute size for width. I'm just giving 50, 50 is going to be okay. I, I feel this is okay. Okay. You can just do the same change on your other screens also. Just click on the menu icon first, change the height to absolute size with absolute size. This is going to be 50. And this is also going to be 50. Okay. Then calculator. So let's click on the menu icon. Just change this to absolute size. Change this to absolute size. This is going to be 50. And this is going to be 50. Got it? Let's quickly live test this. Oh, yeah. This is nice. This is nice. So don't worry about this. This will work on a mobile phone. When you click on it, it should open the toggle drawer menu from the left. Why isn't this working? Let's execute it again. The menu icon, what happened to this? Oh, wait. Timer. Math table. Let's click on calculator. Let's, yeah, this is fine. Timer, this is also fine. Math table, this is also fine. So, yeah. Perfect. Got it. So, math table, then timer. So, you can see the screen will change. Uh, here you can't see the change, but yes, definitely when you see it or execute it on the phone, here you will be seeing the timer screen. And then when you click on calculator, you will be seeing calculator screen. When you click on math table, you will be seeing math table screen. Okay, that's it. We've, we've completed this. You can now publish this. I mean to say you can download this app and you can use this on your phone also now. Okay, so all these web apps now have become uh, native apps, right? That's it. Wow. Cool. So this was all about our today's session. I hope you all enjoyed this session, right? So it was very much informative where we have learned about web viewer component, drawer navigator component, right? And then you also have learned how to convert a web app into a native app, right? So all your code.org apps are web apps, which really um, are only usable or um, you can use them only on a web browser, right? But now you have converted these web apps into 
into native apps okay so when i say native apps i mean to say that you can download these apps and you can use them on your mobile phone also now i can completely download this app onto my mobile phone and i can i can start using it okay so this is how simple it is to convert a web app into a native app right so yeah um, this is all for today's session let's meet in the next session with another concept until then you know what you have to do so you just have to uh, go back to my channel subscribe to it do watch all the videos in sequence if you are starting off with any playlist right and yeah please do like comment share and subscribe to my channel folks up and thank you so much for watching this video guys bye bye and have a great day all